I've got another problem up here on the board. This time we're in three space. Our point x, y, z is approaching 1, 0, negative 1. <laughs> so I can take a look. If I tried to plug in, the denominator is going to 0, and so is the numerator. So I'm getting an indeterminate form. <laughs> I don't have the same expression on top and on bottom. I see an x plus z on top and on bottom, but I also see a y on bottom that's not on the top. So I don't see a useful substitution. And we're not in two space. So I don't even care that we're not approaching the origin. Polar coordinates only works in two space and only if we're approaching the origin. So two reasons not to use that here. We're in three space and we're not going to the origin. All right, so I'm going to hope that this limit does not exist and I'm going to try paths. Okay. And I think the simplest paths are just lines. And I think the simplest paths are lines that are parallel to the coordinate axes. Notice that since we're in three space, in order to get a line I need, that's parallel to one of the coordinate axes, I'm going to hold two of the three variables fixed at numeric values. If I look at, for example, just the x-axis, x is changing, y and z are both fixed at zero if I'm on the x-axis. So if I have something that's parallel to that, I would have y and z both be fixed. So let's try that. R1 of t, I'm going to go parallel to the um, x-axis, so I'm going to have y and z fixed. So x is t, y is going to be 0, and t is going to be, and z is going to be negative 1. Okay. Very important that the path actually go through the point. Okay. So I can't use, for example, the x-axis, because this isn't on the x-axis. I do need to make sure when I'm choosing my paths, there is a value of t, in this case if t is 1, that would put me at that location. Okay, so we'll try the limit um, as x, y, z approaches 1, 0, negative 1 along r1 of t. Describing it in terms of x, y, and z, so I just copy the function as is, x plus z over x plus y plus z. But now I'm going to describe it in terms of my just one variable, my parameter t. So this would be the limit as t approaches we said we need t to be 1 if we're going to be at this point. So as t approaches 1. Okay, and then I replace x with t. I replace y with 0 and z with negative 1. So this becomes t minus 1 over t plus 0 minus 1. Well, that's the limit as t approaches 1 of t minus 1 over t minus 1. That cancels to just give me 1. Okay. So, Along R1, we got that the limit was 1. I'm going to just keep that recorded up there. And let's try another path. We're get hoping to either get a different number or to get that the limit does not exist. Okay. So, if I were to go, I'm actually going to go parallel to the Z axis next. So, that would mean that I'd be holding X and Y fixed. So, let's call that R2 of T. If it's parallel to the z-axis, z is the variable that's changing, I'm holding x and y fixed. And if they're going to go through this point, they better be fixed at the coordinates of that point. So we'll try 1, 0, t. Okay. Now, if I look at the limit as x, y, z approaches 1, 0, negative 1, oh, x plus z over x plus y plus z. And I forgot to specify, I meant to say this is going to be along R2 of t. So now I can say that's going to be the limit as t approaches. Let's see. t is going to have to be approaching negative 1 this time. Okay. And I'm replacing x with 1, y with 0, and z with t. So we'll have 1 plus t over 1 plus 0 plus t. But that's the limit as t approaches negative 1 of 1 plus t over 1 plus t. And the same thing on top and bottom. That's going to cancel. That's going to give me 1. Same thing I got last time. That does not prove that the limit is 1. The limit is not 1. We're about to prove that the limit is not 1. Okay? We have checked two paths. There are infinitely many paths that go through this point. 
we would need to get the same thing for all infinitely many. Okay. So I rigged this a little bit. I went to parallel to the z-axis because I knew that was going to give us the same thing. Let's look at what we get parallel to the y-axis and try that. But even if we get 1, that's not going to prove that the limit is 1. If we get 1, that would simply mean we need to try another path. I almost always try linear paths because lines are simple. Uh, there is nothing to say that I have to choose a linear path. I could have a curved path as well. Okay. All right, so I'm going to try R3 of t. That's going to be parallel to the y-axis. So my variable y is going to match the parameter t. x and z will be fixed at 1 and negative 1. Okay, so now I can say the limit as x, y, z goes to 1, 0, negative 1 of x plus z over x plus y plus z. And we're going to take this limit along R3 of t. So now I can describe that as in terms of t. So this is the limit as t approaches. Let's see, t needs to be approaching 0. OK. And we're replacing x with 1 and z with negative 1 and y with t. So we're going to have 1 plus a negative 1, or 1 minus 1, over 1 plus t minus 1. So we're getting the limit as t approaches 0 of we literally have 0 on top and t on bottom. Now, we tried in the last video a path where we literally had 0 on bottom before we took the limit. That was completely out. That told us that that entire path was not in the domain of our function and we weren't allowed to use that path. This is totally fine. This tells us, okay, it is undefined if t is equal to 0, but everywhere else we're going to be getting 0. So this limit is 0. I get that not by plugging in 0, but by saying if I were to graph the function 0 over t, where this is the t-axis, it's undefined if t is 0, but everywhere else it's going to give me a value of 0, and so that limit is going to be 0. <laughs> so we do get a different limit along path 3. So now the first limit we got was 1. We got that on both 1 and 2. But I'm going to make the brilliant observation. I really enjoy this part because I get to feel smart for pointing out something so basic. 1 and 0 are different numbers. Oh, I can do third semester calculus. Okay. So thus, the limit as x, y, z approaches 1, 0, negative 1 of x plus z over x plus y plus z does not exist. Okay. It is important that I specify which limit doesn't exist, because the path limits did exist. The overall limit is what does not exist.